the head and violence behind government. And that only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus already the plurality of nonviolent solutions that us, well, us, us six here share already, you know? So that's, so that's the immorality, that's the contradiction of that. You know, I guess for me, I'm just trying to say, let's turn to our community to solve our problems and turn away from that, which compromises our own values to begin with. Right, so what are your thoughts on that? So you're saying rather than you know, use methods to scare people into doing things, you'd rather do things like, you know, assign community service or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can have rules, right? We, we can have uh, non-profit organizations. We can have, well, like, people always ask, what about the poor? Which is great, because that implies you already care about the poor. Which means you don't need to force everyone else and steal their money, I guess, through taxation to, to help the poor when, when you already want to do it. And that could be done more efficiently, more effectively, and more directly than having about 80% of that, you know, eaten up by bureaucracy alone. Right. Um, so you look, recognize the reality of the government that they have a monopoly on roads, they have a monopoly on security, they have a monopoly on schools, on uh, judges, on courts. You can't opt out, unsubscribe, cancel your payment, or provide a better service. Right. Uh, you can't compete. Like Netflix, for example, last year tried to raise their prices overnight and people are like, forget that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu, right? But you can't do that. Even though the services that they force on for you, that you have to pay for, even if they're abusive and harmful, you can't unsubscribe. You can't even have the freedom to say, I want to provide a better security that's not going to be abusive and harmful to the consumers who are paying my salary. And that's, and that's the immorality of it. And that has a violent monopoly on a lot of these services that we're not allowed to compete and offer something better of quality. But it, yeah, so what do you guys think of that? I feel like maybe you're oversimplifying it. I don't know. Also, whoa, 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 please, please, please. Um, I mean, the government does a lot of good. Like what? And it seemed kind of necessary. Uh, well, well, I mean, uh, well, can, can you name me one thing that's good that they do? Infrastructure. Yeah. Infrastructure, okay, like roads, right? Yeah. All right, like, again, we can have, well, the thing is, government outsources this to corporations, businesses to build roads. So they don't really don't build anything. They, they, they go for the lowest bidder, and people are more politically connected, and they give those grants too, the contracts. So government pretty much takes their money, so they're the middle man, pretty much. You know, instead of you actually giving it directly to someone who actually will fill the potholes, right? Who actually has a vested interest in taking care of the roads, and the government doesn't do that. They outsource that to someone else. So you're saying you should just have the companies do it in the first place? Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know if I would no trust the companies man. either, I don't know. Well, at least, at least the companies will be beholden to you. If you can't trust the companies, it'll be the companies, uh, I guess, they'll be behooven to say, you know what, I'll give you a guarantee, I'll fix the roads. Because the thing is, they could go bankrupt, right, if they don't have your, your trust, right? Well, you can say, well, you know what, I don't think you're doing a good job, I'm going to go with someone else. Or maybe you could be entrepreneur enough to provide a better service and quality of good than, than what they can provide, right? I mean, eBay is a great example how this works, right? If someone provides a bad service on eBay, bad business, people don't do business with them. They're rated down, they're socially ostracized. And there's no government on eBay, there's no you know criminal justice system on eBay. They have a great dispute resolution organization, but it's all voluntary, right? And people have the freedom to compete and provide a better business, a better service, or a better good. So I guess, and that's, and that's the reality with the infrastructure. The government doesn't build anything. They take your money and then they give it to someone else to do it. So they're like, in a way, the middleman, whereas you can do it more efficiently and directly, and for you to have a better choice, and who's actually going to do it better for you? So you would just pay the company directly? Yes. And it'll be so much cheaper. Okay, all right. But what, what if people just don't pay the company? Yeah, why like, would it just be anarchy? Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, why, why would they? Would? Because uh, businesses will have, have an incentive to, to want to do it because they want to have easy access and travel to their businesses, right? So there's an incentive enough to have a, a infrastructure to travel. Right, but like, there then there only needs to be like, like, okay, so if you say that each person has to give the company directly, there's no actual say like, she could pay for it and I don't have to and technically it'd be filled up because she paid the money. Well, that'd be great. Then they put a sign and put her name. This road was, you know, helped by, sponsored by her. But, you know, and so- that so, be enough for you? Yeah, I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, Well, but she won't be the only one because we're all asking the question, who's gonna help fund the roads? That implies that we care about roads. That implies we would want roads, right? But as, like, I feel like as a, like, go the government makes it so that, like, collectively they collect everything. So each one pays an equal part of, like, so when they u they're using it, they're also paying for right. keeping it safe. Like, when you live in a house, you know, one person is not the person who takes care of the entire house. Each individual member sure, yeah. pays for the entire house and makes sure it's all working together. Right. Whereas, like... That's your basic responsibility as an American is to pay your taxes. So yeah. you take care of these basic things that we need. And, yeah, you might not agree with everything, but nobody's going to agree with everything. All right, well, but the thing, you, you look at reality again. We're talking about taxation. It's nothing but theft, right? If you have this great idea, it doesn't require force. 
right? Good ideas don't require violence. Because in the reality of it, it's like you're, you're pretty much going at your neighbor and your friends and taking their money to fund your idea that you have a better way to provide the services and no one else is allowed to compete and provide something even better, right? Uh, so, I mean, for me, it's like don't pass off the, that gun to the cops to, to extract people's money. We could do this more voluntary, more freely within our own choices. I mean, right, for example, there's a monopoly on the dollar in your pocket today. Okay, uh, since 1913, there used to be a variety of different kinds of money. People freely traded, people created their own currency, towns had money, banks had money. In 1913, the government created a monopoly. No one's allowed to compete. If they compete it, they're kidnapped and thrown into a cage. But it simplifies it. I mean, it's really hard to you know, exchange money between places if you know the money's not equal. Well, I mean, there's, 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 value, a, right, right, there's a currency exchange. People, both this, this has been worked for a long time, so I guess it, I at least have a like to have the option to opt out, right? But then, like, that, okay, not only would that affect our, but it would also affect like international like right. currency trade. It's already affecting international because there's a monopoly. But so it's so much weaker if it it's, was. It is so much weaker now because there's a monopoly on the currency. It's lost over 97% of its value. You can check it today. You know, go online, type in uh, loss of value of the dollar. It's lost over 97% of its value because it was monopolized. And anything that has monopoly on anything, the quality always goes down. And this hurts the poor the worst because there's no incentive to save when every dollar you hide underneath your bed mattress just decreases in value. Right? There's another currency out there which I think is really cool. It's called Bitcoin. You guys heard of this? Yeah. yeah. You heard? Okay, yeah. It's a digital currency. There's no monopoly. It's, it's, uh, there's no government agency that can't regulate it. They can't tax it. And a lot of businesses are starting to switch over to this because uh, it's easier to, to act that transaction. Actually, I have an app on my phone. It's called Blockchain that you can kind of trade in a lot of these oh services. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, one last thing, one last thing, one last thing. Well, we can step on the side. Oh, actually, you mentioned a good point. The, this philosophy is called, actually, it's called anarchy. <laughs> by, defi <laughs> by definition, well, here's an anarchy pamphlet, peaceful parenting pamphlet, and volunteers. I'm going to pass you all the same thing. Um, okay. So the thing is, anarchy by definition, like in science, means without. An means without, like anions and cations. Um, archy means rulers. Right? So like in uh, monarchy means one ruler, anarchy means without rulers. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers, arbitrary and dictating how best our lives should be lived. We can have an uh, apartment complex that's 420 friendly, for example, one across the street that's not. Right? We can have these community of preferences. We can have a real free market of competition that's followed on the voluntary interactions that we already share. Like in the beginning, we asked these first two questions, do you guys see these violence? Do you don't? Right? We, we, we can be good. We can be able to trust each other to, to go to a better place. We just don't need a government that contradicts our own moral principles. It only knows how to solve problems through violence to get there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take good care. All right. Take good care. Thank you. Versus the plurality of nonviolence solutions. So that's five here already shared. Right? And you recognize the truth about government and that they have a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on security. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on roads, on schools, on even money. You can't opt out, cancel your payment, or have the freedom of choice to provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the people that are paying their salaries. Right? So that's, that's the hidden violence behind government. It contradicts that which we already do. We don't use violence to solve problems. So what are, what are your thoughts? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that's the hidden violence behind it. We, we still have security, we can still have roads, we can still have all this stuff. Um, at least it'll be to the, the consumers who have the choice then, or you can have the freedom to compete. Like Netflix last year, try to raise their prices overnight and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel, unsubscribe, go to Hulu, <laughs> right? Or you can have the freedom to compete, write something better. So unfortunately, you can't do that with the government. The government has a violent monopoly on these four services that not only you're supposed to pay for, but you can't opt out, right? You can't compete. So, uh, oh, any more thoughts? Uh, so, so pretty much I'm part of an organization called Liberate RVA. Liberate our community from the idea that violence will set us free. Not just state violence, but the violence we do to each other, and especially the violence that's done to children. You know, you have to universalize that, otherwise it becomes a preference. Right? And so, for the most part, I'm here trying to turn to our community and turn away from government. Right? Turn away from that which contradicts our own moral values. Turn away from that which uh, that doesn't know how to solve any, any problems but their violence. Right? So that's, that's pretty much what I'm out here for. So this philosophy, by definition, is called anarchy. Uh, so like um, like in science, anions and cations, and means without. Uh, archy means rulers. Like monarchy means one political ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers, strangers, arbitrarily dictating how best our lives should be lived. Right? So that's pretty much what I'm, I'm out here for. If you guys would like, I have some pamphlets. So... 
We also advocate peaceful parenting too, so it's, uh, it's a big part of uh, the structure because you can't just be against, again, one type of violence. So we actually re so we meet monthly. Pretty much, it's uh, discussed about philosophy, discussed about uh, different ways we can uh, solve these problems. For example, you guys hear what's happening in Detroit? No. They fought for bankruptcy, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so every every city, state, utopian dream always becomes unsustainable because there's not enough money and wealth to steal to keep funding. All right. For example, like. Um, like in the very beginning of, uh, of, of this country, taxes were really low, regulations were really low. Over 200 years later, now it's 40, 50 percent of your income stolen, right? Uh, the value of the dollar, because they monopolized it in 1913, has lost over 97 percent of its value. So every time you have a monopoly on anything, the quality always goes down. Uh, so pretty much, so in Detroit, you know, because uh, government is unsustainable and they can't provide any more services, like it takes an hour for like the cops to respond, for example. Uh, there's this guy though who provided a free, uh, not a free, he, free, he provided a business to protect these neighborhoods, his own security. And people like that a lot more because at least people are not being thrown into a cage for a victimless crime. Right? So people want this security and he's, he's been able to offer this. Now at the same time, mass transit system has shut down. So there's this guy who bought these four buses painting these buses to reflect the geographic regions of Detroit and these buses will pick you up wherever you are. There's no centralized planning route. You can call him, text him, wherever you are he'll pick you up. These buses also have Wi-Fi. These buses have music. These buses have BYOB <laughs> because there's no there's no longer a state monopoly on law to enforce. All right? And that's what they have. We can have rules, but they also have a monopoly on law. You can't have a polycentric legal system, right? You can't choose a, a fair judge when the judge works for the state, the cop works for the state, the prosecutor works for the state, so it's not really impartial. You no, know, it's like uh, your stepbrother being in charge of the other organization you appeal to. So, uh, so that's, that's really it. That's, uh, that's the hidden violence behind government. So, uh, no, th thank you guys for, for talking and hearing about it. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate it. My name is Cal, by the way. That's me. What's your name? Uh, ben. Ben, pleasure to meet you, Ben. Your name is? Esme. Esme. Oh, pleasure. <laughs> My name is Cal. Yeah. You are? Stephania. Stephania? Pleasure. Evie. Evie? Oh, they're yeah. doing that. Mexico. Mexico? Bolivia. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guest of this person? Yep. So, any, any more questions? Any thoughts? Or uh, what, what do you guys think about all of this? It's interesting. Awesome. Yeah? Interesting. <laughs> Uh, one of the Federalist Papers actually talks about this, like all the basic rights uh, that are inherent to humanity, and uh, like I think one of them actually talks about how government, uh, like the reason why they like break these rules is like for the greater good or whatever. But it's on a smaller scale, you know, because colonies, you know, smaller. Yeah. But um, yeah, it could have grown out of proportion. But like it's it's really good to read. Yeah, yeah, I've read them, like especially yeah. the anti-Federalist Papers. Yeah. Uh, but so the government takes a utilitarian approach, right. right? So they're trying to say it's the greatest good for the majority, but in reality it's actually also the greatest evil for the minority, right? Something that's good and, and evil at the same time, you know, can't coexist. So you call it for what it is, it's just a preference, right? Uh, the government has a monopoly on the greatest preference that they enforce on everyone, even if you don't agree on it, right? So the thing is we can still have rules, there's just no need for political rules. We can have an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one right across the street that's not. Right? We can coexist with these preferences. You don't need to have to force one preference onto anyone, but that's the only way the government knows how to solve any disputes, any problems. And that's why it takes forever for, for, for change to come, you know? And I don't want to be 80 years old still holding a sign begging to be free, you know? I don't want my social security to be born with social security prison tattoo numbers that they'll never see in their lifetime, you know? Because it's unsustainable. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, like I guess that's the gist of it. Yeah, the anti federalist paper they talk about, but that's, that, that's why it's become the Levea on it is today. One little exception of that, uh, of that, of, of those rules is what causes it to, to grow. Like they'll say, you're not allowed to steal. We'll call it taxes. You're not allowed to murder. We'll call it organized war. And in reality, it really is a war on drugs. And, and, and in reality, they call it a war on drugs, but in reality, it's a war on people. Right? So they use a lot of words to kind of change what, what it is objectively. You know, so they, they play a lot of words, they play instead to distract what it really is. You know, you can't show me your friends, your family, or even Americans without showing me individual people. Right? Only individual people exist. Right? There's no such thing as a city of Richmond. Right? There's no such thing as uh, the USA. It's an arbitrary line on a piece of paper. 
right? But yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, the anti fetish papers are most, most interesting for me. But, uh, but you'll find that one little exception, like in the beginning, they have one little tax, one little regulation, but they increase over time, over time, and that's where it is today. Today, you, the USA is number one at something, and that's kidnapping, and caging, and dehumanizing more of its own people, more than any other country in the world. Right, we have the largest prison population, more than like China, for example, or India, and they have billions of people in that population, right? And that's how it escalates, that one little exception for violence allows them to grow to, to the state of uh, violence where it is today, to, to the state of Detroit falling into chaos and ruins. It was a cool discussion. Yeah, I gotta go. all right, man, take pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's cool. Me too. Take good care. Of course, take good care. Take with us. Thank you. Take with us. And that's to the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that us three already share. All right, well, okay, the thing about taxes is that you don't actually have to pay taxes because if you use government things, like you're standing right here, right? Yeah. This is a sidewalk, which is uh, paid by the government. I mean, the government pays for a lot of things like playgrounds and parks. That money, that's part of your, that's why you pay taxes, so that you can live in the community which the government is helping you build. Right. So you don't have to pay taxes. You can go in the middle of nowhere on an island with no internet, nothing that the government does for you, and live there by yourself and hunt from the land if you want to. You don't okay. have to pay taxes then. So they won't put you in a cage necessarily. And also, I mean, I think it's a little like a bit an exaggeration to say that the government always only uses violence because let's say you're speeding. There's a cop pull out a gun and Well, let's look at one example. Let's go to the first one you brought up. Okay, I think okay. that's very important. Right. The thing is, the government, the state, has a monopoly on roads. They have a monopoly on security, on judges, on courts. They have a monopoly well, of course, on law. Those are all government appointed officials. Yeah. These are violent monopolies. You can't they're, compete. They're well, let, let, me, let me finish. Okay. They have a monopoly on these services. Okay. You're not allowed to cancel up to like Netflix. If they were to raise their prices overnight like they did last year, People are like, oh, forget that, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu. Or have the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to, you know, raise the cost overnight. But with government, you can't opt out. You can't cancel your payment. You can't uh, have the freedom to provide a better service. You can still have security. Well, you can provide your own service in government. That's different you can't. because you can become a third-party candidate and run. I don't want to be your political ruler. I don't want to force my ideas onto other people. That's they the don't. way government knows how to solve problems. It's a contradiction to my moral values they already have. Right? Okay, but then what's your idea of a good government? I don't want. I don't, we don't need a government. We can have you rules. Don't, you don't want any. You don't, want, want, you don't. You don't want any government. I don't at want all. any any organization that knows how to solve problems to violence. I want to go to what we're ready to use in our lives. We don't use. Okay, violence but to then solve let's problems. say let's say another country wants to invade us. And you don't have. Let's say your government doesn't use violence at any means necessary. Right. We don't have okay? a government. They right, come, right, right. invade yeah. you, you're done. Yeah. That's it. Game no, over. No, no, not at all. We, we have the freedom to defend ourselves. We, ha we can have a, a dispute resolution organization. So you actually think if another country invades us and you have a non-violent government, that citizens holding arms will be able to completely like defend themselves? Right. The only like reason why other countries invade other countries is because they want to take over the tax farm. The only reason why Hitler wanted to take over France is to take over the existing tax system. If you take over that, then you have enough money to keep funding your war effort. When there's no tax system, there's no government there's nothing to take over I mean, this okay. is why they call Afghanistan the graveyard of empires because there's nothing to take over uh, Russia's tried it the Mongols tried it the US has been trying there's nothing to take over there's no taxes we're not taking places, over we're leaving Afghanistan who said we're taking over the United States has been well, well, I mean, they've been What's there for prove? a couple years they've okay. been there for quite yeah they've, they've been trying they've to been take fighting. over it's a war but yeah, again, over. you don't have a choice to, to fund that. But, okay, then right? don't don't pay your taxes then. That's what I'm saying. Well, they're saying you don't have a choice. You have to do it because if you don't, they throw you into a cage. Okay, so then why don't you go, like, live on islands? Well, what if, because somewhere. if you, well, are, are you comfortable taking a gun and putting it to friends and family and your community and taking their money? But that's not the same thing. That's how they that's, do. Don't, 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 pass the, don't pass the, don't pass the, don't pass the gun to the cops to do the violence for you. Don't be a coward. You're going to say the taxation is good. If you can't see that it's death, they'll say that you're not allowed to steal. They'll call it taxes. You're not allowed to murder. They'll call it organized war. They'll call it drone bombing, choking uh, overseas, collateral damage. But over here in, in uh, Boston, they'll call it a terrorist attack. So your biggest, you're basically the, what you have a problem with is the war aspect. Of no, government. I was in the military. So yeah, I have a good understanding of the war aspect. I have a good understanding of the yeah. military. So it does nothing to defend our freedoms or grant us more freedoms. The freedoms we're losing are here at home, not so you overseas. Don't, you don't like the military, basically. I, we can have a military. We can have security. We can have Okay, roads. no, no, no I get schools. that, but you don't like, you don't like how the military No, I don't like the cohesive aspect of it. That we're forced to. You have no choice. You don't. You can't compete. You can't provide a good quality of service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the people that are paying the salary. Okay, but let's say this. Let's say that you're living in your home, right? There's no. There's no police or anything. Okay, you have the right to defend yourself, right? You're not being a coward. Okay. Someone comes to your house. They want to rob your house. Okay. Sure. They put up a gun, try to shoot you. Then you kill them. Okay. 
But what does that solve? Then that just happens and everyone has guns, everyone just kills each other. Actually, you'll find statistically that the places that have the least amount of gun laws in this country have the lowest amount of crime. The places in this country that have the most amount of gun laws taken but away people's guns, officers. they have so many crimes. But I'm saying without police officers, because that's what you want. Right, and so when did up him, do you guys hear what's happening in Detroit then? Detroit is bankrupt. Yeah. The police response time takes over an hour. They can't yeah. respond to this stuff. There's this guy who created his own security to these neighborhoods, and these neighborhoods are voluntarily paying for these services. He's not okay. throwing anyone in cages for victimless crimes. Okay. He's, this is a free and voluntary service that he's All providing. Right. This is security, and this okay. is happening right now in Detroit today. Okay. Okay. So these things can't exist. But okay, what's your point, though? My point is that. The monopoly that the government has on these services is yeah. unsustainable. You can't keep stealing everyone's wealth. Eventually, every city is going to go in the way of Detroit. It's unsustainable. Uh, but the so government's the one that handles the economy. Do you think that you could handle the economy? I, mean, I don't want to handle other people's. Go ahead. Small scale things like yeah. running things in Detroit or the exactly. neighborhoods. Um, once you become bigger and bigger, like. See, you have to start making the problem pay money, otherwise you can't provide the service that you want. The problem I'm seeing with your argument is that you're taking things that apply to a community level or an individual level, and then you're applying to government, and then you're taking things that apply to a government level, and you're trying to apply them to the individual. You have to understand that they are two separate entities. You have your own rights as an individual. You can do whatever you want. You can petition. No, you I have don't. I can't, you I can't make right my own petition. liquor. I can't uh, make. I can't create you my can't own business. Your, what? You can't. You can't. You can't yeah, you have to ask permission. You have to get license. You have to get regulations. So what's wrong you with go, that? Then you could be selling it to mine. You have to be licensed. Government has been. <laughs> you have to be licensed. Okay. Well, the thing is, uh, maybe this is not really a good way for you guys to understand. Again, we'll start for the basics. Can you not see that taxation is coercive? It's Otherwise, what? coercive. Taxation, you have no choice. It's not voluntary. Otherwise, you're confusing love making with rape. Actually, One's voluntary, you the have, other's coercive. You, you, have, you have options. You, you can, don't have it's you not options. Not, options you, mean you can't no choice. If you move to the middle of nowhere and don't use any government services, don't own a house, you can live off the land. Don't the pay government taxes, doesn't great. create anything. They steal your stuff and they outsource it to other companies and buildings to build the roads, to build the stuff. That's good. That's, that's not good. They're that, the that's middle man. Society. They, no, that's not a good society because it's going to go in the way of Detroit. Detroit had a government. So then, how are you going to have roads? We can have roads. My friends build roads. You can have a business well, that builds roads. How hard is it to build, put gravel on the okay, ground? Okay, but who's gonna, is everyone going to pay him for the road, You don't have right? to. Businesses will want to have roads because it, it facilitates the road to travel to their businesses. How hard is that? What? Yes, Wait, people what? roads. Or for example, you look at places in Europe, people remove their traffic lights and all their stop signs. Okay. You think people will have, there be a lot of accidents, but it's not. Traffic congestion went down, accidents went down. It became a road staring experiences with everyone, okay? You don't have these problems. Like in Portugal, they decriminalized all their drugs. They didn't make it legal or illegal. They just, they just made all the drugs, they just removed the government out of it. And the drug use in Portugal and then you have cartels. went down. No, drug use just went down. The disease associated with it went down. Things improved when government removed itself from the equation. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, drugs, okay, fine. You can have an argument about drugs. It's not I get drugs, that. it's about everything. Government messes everything up when it gets itself involved. So then what do you, I understand what you like. What's I'm trying to idea? say, let's turn to our community and turn away from government. I don't think your idea, will, the, your idea doesn't work because let's look at every, do you know what the revolutionary circle is? What's that? Okay, so it's the concept that a revolutionary, every single, almost every revolutionary they say in history goes through this like phases, okay? You become a revolutionary, you want to fight the government, overthrow it, okay. So you lead a group of people, right? And then, in the few instances in history where it's happened, they'll say you overthrow the government. You have, well, guess what happens to a revolutionary? He becomes a dictator. Right. So that's the point. Like, I don't understand what you're, you, everyone's going to no, 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 no. That's not the point I'm making. Violence only begins violence. Every revolution turns bloodier than the last. What I'm advocating is to let go of the idea of government. But you don't have to have a revolution. There's no replacement of a government. And in fact, objectively, there's no such thing as a government. You're, you can't provide me any fact or evidence that a government there's exists. There's never been one civilization in history. In history. Right. Think about that. In history. Right where no government has sustained itself and not just been crushed. Right, and so that's to tell you something. Let go of this idea that doesn't work. It doesn't work. That, 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 right, so let go of government. Itself. I'm not advocating for government. I'm advocating exactly. for free I'm saying and free and voluntary society. I'm saying without a government, it won't work. It's, Be, no, it's because they had a government of utopia. No, You're thinking of utopia. You're still thinking that 3,000 years of government could still work today. No, I'm thinking that's crazy reality. Talk. That, yeah, reality, every single form of government collapses because it becomes unsustainable. You can't keep stealing everyone's wealth to provide these services. That's yeah. reality. Yeah. The reality yeah. is, 97% of the dollar in your pocket has lost its value because government monopolized that too. You can't compete, you can't... Monopolize money? Yeah, they monopolize money. It sounds crazy, but that's true. In 1913, before 1913, there used to be a variety of different kinds of money. People trade money is like a good, like a commodity. It could be like a toothpick or a, or you a realize, pencil clip. You realize that currency, a standard currency is necessary to actually conduct life. You like, can still have currency. They have a monopoly in currency. You can't trade without that currency. You can't opt out. You can't have the freedom to create something better. Yeah, and, you can. No, you can't. There's a guy who tried to do that a few years ago called the Liberty Dollar, Arius Kane sees his asset through him in a cage. 
Okay. That's the reality. Yeah, you maybe. can't compete. Okay, you can't make your own currency, but you can still like make new things. See, who's gonna back that currency when you make yeah, currency? This yeah. guy had millions of investors. People were actually investing real gold, real silver, real. I know stuff. about the Liberty Dollar. Liberty Dollar didn't make any sense, and it wasn't viable. We just he basically took like a. Didn't silver, have a chance they because they the government they kidnapped they him. They took and like a, a his silver money. dollar and trying to call it a Liberty Dollar to like get people to invest in him. Actually, people did invest in him. This okay. was going to work. You saw, have you heard of Bitcoin? No. Bitcoin is oh, a digital Bitcoin's currency. A thing online, but that doesn't make any sense either. What I've are you seen, talking about? I've, I've seen, seen Bitcoin and actually it doesn't make, it's not viable because I no have one's an app to trade in Bitcoins actually. Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> this works. Uh, Bitcoin is decentralized. Uh, government hates it because they can't regulate it, they can't tax it. Because you know what you're talking about. Yeah. But hey, 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 let me give you a pamphlet then. Um, here you go, man. Let's go. So the philosophy I'm advocating is called anarchy. Okay. By definition, means without rulers. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers, strangers arbitrarily dictating how our lives should be lived. Okay. We can have like a freedom to compete and provide better services. I'm just saying that. I think Without that a government, everyone, I feel like everyone has the idea that you do that. We can all be individual and make our own currencies. Well, you can't have that many currencies. Well, well, I'm I'm back, so. I think that many hold people. On, hold on. No. Hey, uh, calm down. We're in busy. <laughs> hold on. Okay. Well, hopefully you let go of the idea that violence will set us free. You have a good day. It's a pleasure to meet you. Have more that's questions. That's not my idea. Well, uh, oh, it seems like it is a deal. Say that's not my idea. You're, you still advocate for taxation? But I'm not. Do you advocate for taxation? Don't don't miss my. Do you advocate for taxation? Do I think taxation is good? Yeah, I do. I do. I think. Then you advocate for violence. Uh, violence, no, is I don't. taxation I don't, is theft. Don't say that. Have it's a professional not, discussion. Uh, it's say? a professional discussion. Violence is violence. Placing a person in an involuntary. It's not agreed to disagree. Your ideas are backed by violence. It's not an agreement. My okay. ideas are voluntary. Then I'm okay with the government being used as violence if people are going to keep in line that way. They're yeah. not in line. What are you talking about in line? Right. This, 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 this is kind of chaos. All right, take good care. Okay. I don't get All right, great man. Yeah, yeah and, Milton and, and, and Friedman, do you like that? Dude? Yes, Milton Friedman. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He's my man. <laughs> Have you heard of? Uh, well, I guess uh, David Friedman. Uh, he does a lot of polycentric legal system, you know, because the government has a monopoly on law. So this workforce on the polycentric legal system. You can have rules without rulers, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's pretty interesting. Yeah. So uh, yeah, in the back of this, you'll find a lot more books. I think you'd really, really enjoy. So when's the next time you coming out here? I uh, come here frequently. I'll be here on uh, Wednesday. I'll be here Wednesday, 12:30. All right, I'll stop by. Yeah. Okay, great man. Take good care. Right, and that's the hidden violence behind the government, and that only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that so us three already share. So, what are your thoughts on that? It's crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's just the hidden matrix of government. Um, and they have a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on security. They have a monopoly on roads, on judges. And of course, they even have a monopoly on first-class mail. You don't have the freedom to compete. You don't have the free freedom to provide a better quality of service. Like um, Netflix last year, try to raise the prices overnight and people are like, oh, forget that, cancel and subscribe, go to Hulu, right? But with government, you, you can't. You can't unsubscribe, even if the service they force you to accept and pay for are harmful and abusive, you, you don't even have the freedom to, to withdraw or have the freedom to be an entrepreneur and create something better. Right, and that's the hidden violence behind government. The government has a monopoly on a lot of these uh, services that they force on you. So the, the philosophy they advocate for here is called anarchy. Anarchy by definition, like in science, means anions and cations. Archy means rulers. Like monarchy means one ruler. Anarchy means without political rulers. We can have rules. There's just no need for political rulers, strangers, arbitrarily dictating how best our lives to be lived. Now we can have a polycentric legal system. We can have a, an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. We can have these communities of preferences. You know, and the voluntary aspect that already if we don't use violence to solve problems, let's, let's turn to that. Let's turn to our community and turn away from that which only knows how to solve problems through that violence. Cool, yeah. All right, well, let me give you a pamphlet. There you go. Thanks. So we advocate, uh, so we're part of an organization called Liberate RBA. So it's, it's not just against state violence, it has to be all violence, especially the violence is on the children, including spanking. Spanking only teaches children that violence is a way to solve problems in this world. So it kind of universalizes the principle, otherwise it just becomes a preference. Like the government will say, you're not allowed to steal, we'll just call it taxes. And they'll say, you're not allowed to murder, we'll call it organized war. And then they'll call it a war on drugs, and in reality it's just a war on people. Okay. Yeah? All right, cool. It's a pleasure to meet you. Then my name is Cal. Brooke. Brooke, pleasure to meet you, Brooke. Gerard. Gerard, pleasure to meet you, Gerard. All right, man. Have a great day.